Now, points A, B, C, and D are such that the vector A to B is given by the vector 5i plus 5j. A, C is that, and A, D is this. Find D to C as a simplified expression in terms of i and j. So going from D to C, so let's firstly understand how we draw this. It helps a lot to draw vectors. So it's telling us from point A to point C, we know we travel the vector length of minus 2 plus 15. So what I usually like to write, I like to write as a column. I put the, the, the i term on top and the j term below, so it would be minus 2 and 15. Whereas if it went from A to D, so let's say, a to, let's say D was here instead. This would be a vector length of minus 7 and 10. Now they want to go from which way? D to C. So I'm going to add a different color pen, it helps that way. D to C. So to get from D to C, you've got to follow the known routes. You can go back from D to A and then add A to C. So it's going to equal over here minus minus 710 plus minus 215 and that's going to give us so that'll be plus that'll be, that'll be 7 take away 2 which is 5 this will be minus 10 add 15 which is 5 so that's our vector 5 5 that's the answer to part a so we write over here in terms of i and j so for part a part i it's going to be 5i plus 5j Next part, hence show that ABCD is a parallelogram. To show something is a parallelogram, then we need to somehow show that there's two parallel lines, yeah? So there's a pair of parallel lines. Let's try and see if we can find them. So we've got CD, which is 5, 5. Um, oh yeah, we've got AB, which is 5, 5, 2. So if we went from A to B, so if this is going that way, that means we can add like a B vector here. And just say, this is obviously the same parallel line, 5, 5 going to be and I can just connect this to dot line C and voila guys we've got a parallelogram so to show something is a parallelogram you need two pairs of ex like matching vectors 5i plus 5j we can say therefore for, for part 2 since a to b equals d to c which is 5 5 we have a parallelogram so part B, find the unit vector parallel to B to D as a simple expression in terms of I and J. Okay, so we know the first part. This first part is actually not too bad. Let's firstly calculate B, D and understand how to do that, yeah? So part B, to get from B to D, we just follow the roots. Starting from B, that gets to D. Well, if we look at B, we can go from B to A and then A to D. So this equals B to A plus a to D. And that's going to be, well, it's going to be, because you're going through the arrow, it would be the negative version, so it would be minus 5, minus 5, plus A to D, which is minus 7, 10. And then adding this up, you should get a minus 12 in the top and 5 at the bottom. Okay, cool. So now we have a vector. To get a unit vector is so easy, believe it or not. All you do is literally uh, use Pythagoras on this one. So you square both of them and square root it. So we say, you know, let, let's call this one u. u equal 12 squared plus 5 squared square rooted, yeah? Put this in a calculator. This is actually a Pythagoras value. You should get 13, okay? And now, the, we say that the final answer, the unit vector of BD is going to be plus minus 1 over 13 of your vector minus 12 and 5 or if, if you want to keep an ij form you can say equals plus minus 1 over 13 of and you put in bracket minus 12 i plus 5 j either way so both answers are valid okay so now for the next part it says the point e lies on bd such that be to e to d the ratio is 3 to 10 so why did i drew a dot line from b to d so that's our vector arrow and it's saying that for it's closer to the first three parts here, whereas the rest of the 10 parts are there. So it's probably somewhere here. This could be like roughly where it is. You know, it's pretty close to B, but far away from D. So they want us to find AE as a simplified expression. Okay, there's a really nice trick. All this is telling us here, if there's a total of 3 plus 10, 13 parts, that means the line B to the new one, B to E, 
it's just basically you know 3 over 13 of B to D that's all it is yeah that's how you calculate B to E so to get to A E it will just be let's write down here let's solve it down here we can say A to E is just literally uh, following the vector length we can go we can travel A B first and then add up this new B E isn't it it'll just be A to B plus B to E that's how you get, go from A to E and that should be okay so let's calculate so A to B was just 5 5 plus 3 thirteenths of that's it and now we just solve this one so adding it all up for the first one it'll be 5 plus 3 thirteenths of minus 12 so I'm going to do like a massive one. This will give us 29 over 13. For the bottom vector, and that should give us 80 over 13. And that's it. This is your actual final answer. Cool. Oh, in terms of i and j. So it's always i and j. And so that could be rewritten as 29 over 13 i's plus 80 over 13 j. Now looking at the last one, part d. It says the point F is such that DCF and AEF are both straight lines. Whew, this is a six mark, that's okay. Well, DCF and AEF are both straight lines. So let's understand that. DCF, so it's going to be an extension, DCF. And then AEF. So, okay, well, so it'll be kind of like that. Let's make it a bit higher. So it's kind of like here, yeah. So they're going to probably intersect at that point. This is the visual understanding of, of that. So I put F up here. Are both straight lines. Okay. So the best way to solve these kind of problems when you go like ratio vectors is to basically treat the line like D to F and A to F as an extension of A to E and D to C. Yeah? So what I'm trying to say here, we could say for instance, let um, A to F basically be some scale factor. So let's call it mu of A to E. Yeah? So that's what it's saying. So what it's trying to say is we know what AT is. If we multiply by this mu by some scale factor, we should get the length A to F. Likewise, we could say D to F equals some another one, let's say lambda of D to C. And then we pick another one. We have to basically say, okay, we've got two different equations, but we also need a third one, yeah? One that kind of links to both. So what we can say, another way to get to A to F is to go through A to D or even A to C and go across. I'm going to go from A to D because we've referenced A to F, isn't it? So our other equation could be AF basically could be you traveling to A to D first and then we're going to add, where is it, D to F, right? D to F. So you can see this is kind of where we're going. And we know what D to F is. We basically equate it to, we said it was lambda DC. So here is our other equation here. So the two equations we're really going to use actually in fact this is perfect is the first one here and the second one here and that's it we're going to literally equate them together and you should solve the problem so i'm going to put this right down below so part d okay so let's begin guys yeah we're going to now equate these two sides so we're going to have on the left hand side so let's let them both equal so we're going to have mu and ae so i'll keep on column form because it's easier to work out with and it's going to equal the right hand side. The right hand side is AD plus that AD. So minus 7 and 10 plus lambda. Okay. Perfect. Now we just expand and multiply and equate. So we're going to have basically two simultaneous equations. The first equation, on the, if we look at the i column in the top row, it will be mu times 29 13 equal to minus 7 plus 5 lambda. And the second equation that you can see is going to be 80 thirteens of mu equals 10 plus 5 lambda. Nice. And now thankfully, because we've got 5 lambdas, we can subtract these two equations. Okay, so I'm going to do um, bottom take away top. So if we start on the right hand side, 5 lambda take away 5 lambda is nothing. 10 take away minus 7 is actually plus 17. And then 80 thirteens take away 29 thirteens. I'm just writing my calculator, should give us uh, 51 thirteens. 
and this is equal to mu. And then therefore, making mu the subject, we're just going to do 17 divided by 51 over 13, and mu should be 13 over 3. That's basically where the value of mu is. And then we can work out lambda too. So it's good to just work out everything. So I'm going to just use, I don't know, um, the first equation here. Yeah? So let's use the first equation. So we can make two over here. So we can use the first equation. So we're going to have 29 over 13 times our lambda value equals minus 7 plus, plus 5 lambda. And making lambda the subject, we should get, let's see, lambda equals all of that, 29 13 times 13 over 3 um, plus 7, all of that over 5. Yeah, So that's kind of a big one. So lambda should get you 10 over 3. So that's our answer. So we said now that df, d to f is basically 10 thirds of d to c. And so with this vector, all is saying that if you're going from the ratio of d to f to d to c, and I'm just going to add c to f because that's what I actually want. d to f, so for every one unit of dc, you get 10 thirds of df. And then to get cf, cf was just, I think, the difference between the lines. cf is just basically df take away dc. So subtracting your two frac your your ten thirds and one whole, you should get seven thirds. And that's what they want. And just double checking the ratio they, they actually want. They want the ratio of D C to C to F. So yeah, your final answer would be these two components. You say therefore D C to C F is just one to seven thirds. And yeah, we got it. That's how you do it. If you guys got any questions on this vector problem, and I mean this vector was quite tough. Just let me know in the comments section below. I'll be able to help you guys. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time.